Hello, I am Avinash Upadhyaya, I lead product at Eventception, a product from Platformity Labs. Eventception's vision is to help companies modernize and transform traditional architectures towards being event-driven and reactive. Over the next few minutes, I will be giving you a quick demo of Eventception's capabilities. Request response is something everyone understands. Most popular APIs today are built on this paradigm. Specifically of interest are requests that mutate the state of a resource. This means transactional database, sometimes multiple have to be updated. This is a time-consuming orchestration and makes these types of APIs difficult to scale sublinearly with increased load. Let's contrast this with a messaging-driven approach. Here, services send messages typically to a high-performance message or event broker like Apache Kafka, which then fans it out to multiple subscribe services. This often scales better but lacks transaction semantics and is often difficult to implement. Many of you may actually know from experience that most use cases actually require a combination of both approaches. This typically involves the service performing a dual write to the database and the message broker or the same changes being passed through the message broker using an approach like change data capture. These approaches, however, suffer from one of two limitations. Dual writes are complicated to achieve and require sensitive code changes. Many times, these may be legacy applications or outside our do domain of control. Approaches such as CDC capture role level changes but piecing back domain objects from table and row level changes require a lot of complex stream processing. And this is specifically what Eventception solves for. It does this by treating the API history as a transactional log. It integrates directly with most API platforms, gateways and proxies in real time and allows you to synthesize these events into self-evident events using an interactive model or declarative annotations embedded directly in your interface in description such as your open api 3 spec the result is what we call as reflexive events consumable through the kafka protocol kafka connectors or webhooks that call your endpoints all this requires zero code changes in your application and unlike cdc your apis target the fully formed domain objects as a resource so therefore there are minimal processing overheads eventception is an ideal platform for several concerns starting from Event sourcing and CQRS in a polyglot world. It could be used to source events directly through proxy data plane like Envoy and automatically sync synthesized events into an event store through a connector. It can potentially perform processing to go build projections, MVs, or even warm caches. For data intensive applications, it could be used uh, primarily as a data exchange and fan out mechanism between systems. It could also be used to send operational data to real time analytical databases or to data lakes and warehouses. Lastly, it could also be used to trigger downstream event sagas and SEDA pipelines based on the events that occurred. With that, we'll cut over to an actual demo. Now, I'm presently logged into the Eventception app. As mentioned before, Eventception supports several different API management and proxy solutions. For this demo, I will use Kong. In Kong, I have about presently five APIs set up. Let me begin by adding this gateway in along with the credentials to authenticate to the gateways admin API. I will be authenticating with uh, basic auth for the gateway sermon API. We will also need to provide properties for eventception to sync the admin uh, API properties. Now, Eventception will need to sync the APIs from the gateway. Let us allow a moment for it to sync. Okay, the uh, gateway has now been synced with Eventception. I will now also implement the Eventception agent for Kong, which is implemented as a global plugin. We do this by adding a log producer. The log producer can either pull logs from a source such as S3 bucket or CloudWatch or Elasticsearch or even a Kafka topic or the API gateway can push the logs to one of our sources, which is uh, going to be a Kafka topic. Here we can find the instructions for uh, downloading and installing the plugin along with configuring the plugin. Let us do this in the background. Once the plugin is configured, Eventception should be able to view the API logs. Now let's take a look at the APIs that are synchronized. 
As you can see, I have the 5 APIs discovered and synchronized here. They are now available as event sources. Now I will proceed to creating a processing spec. You can do this through the UI and rule based DSL interactively or you can use the declarative option which is to embed open API spec connotations and processing directives directly inside open API 3 spec. This option is largely attractive because you can version and manage these artifacts directly inside open API 3 without the need for other integrations. For now I will choose this option. Here's what my spec looks like. The most important details here are at each method level. The X event section event to topic binding describes the topic name in the primary destination which is to Kafka. The X event section event key accepts placeholder variable values. Here I am defaulting it to the request body order ID. And the X event section event value once again accepts uh, placeholder and variable values. I am defaulting it to the complete payload along with a few uh, variables. Note that event exception supports uh, templating with JSONnet. In this open API spec, I have uh, provided uh, the annotations for the post request for orders along with uh, the put request for the orders which is to update an order. Let us upload this. Now we'll need to provide a name for our uh, processing spec and also the API source which is the API gateway. Let us upload this. And that's it. With these processing specs applied, we expect to see transactions fanned out to the corresponding event binding topics. So when I create an order, I should see events being synthesized into the create order stream and when I update an order into the update order stream. Note that these are according to my earlier configuration predicated on matching the response code. So therefore this will only happen when the response code is 2xx. Let's proceed to making these calls. I have a couple of shell scripts that are help me with making these API calls. Let's start by uh, creating a few orders and updating a few orders at the same time. Let's go back to eventception. As you can see, immediately two streams appeared. Consumers of these events can new now consume them through multiple modes. First, let's use a Kafka consumer. Kafka is the de facto protocol for high performance event streaming. Eventception is compatible with all Kafka clients. Here, I will use the Java console consumer. But in real life, you will have a programmatic consumer that can pro process and commit these events. Let's copy the credentials provided by eventception. Create a file uh, client.properties. As you can see, we are now consuming the events from the create order stream. Next, what if I wanted these events delivered to an event store such as PostgreSQL? Well, let's wire that up. I will be creating a connector for Postgres. Let's name it orders Postgres and provide it with uh, the connection URL which is in the JDBC format along with uh, the username and password for the connection. We will name the table date order and set rest of it to the default values. Now let us verify that by checking the database. We have a table created for update order. Let's just do a select of one from the update order table. As you can see, it is being delivered in almost real time. I could of course use any arbitrary destinations supported through any Kafka sync connector such as MongoDB, Cassandra or elsewhere such as a data lake or warehouse for analytical purposes. Finally, what if I want to have these events delivered to my service as a push? Eventception supports webhook dispatcher for this purpose. It also supports retrying against a budget as well as backing off if your service is temporarily unavailable. Let us create a consumer for webhook. We will need to provide it with a name. Let's call it orders webhook. 
and provided with the URL for Eventception to make the API call. And uh, additionally, there's uh, other uh, headers that we can provide, but this is a simple uh, endpoint that does not have any authentication or requires any special headers. Let us check our uh, service logs. As you can see, we are now getting the uh, same data in our uh, webhook service. Eventception captures a wealth of data through the API logs and the events that are synthesized. Let's take a look at the dashboard for one of the organizations. Here, Eventception provides an overview of the generated analytics. Under the ecosystem metrics, we are presented with the total events that are generated by Eventception and the total events that are fanned out to the various consumer channels. Under the performance metrics, we can look at the average processing latency of Eventception, the average consumer lag across the various channels and the average lag by based on the various uh, consumer channels and the ingress throughput and the egress throughput along with the fan out by the various uh, consumer channels. We are also presented with the top 5 event sources by events, by APIs and also the top 5 streams by the number of messages and by the number of uh, consumers consuming these messages. Evolving to event driven architecture can be challenging but as you can see eventception vastly simplifies this. Eventception also provides you a rich set of metrics as well as APIs to process dead letter channels. Eventception is presently in private beta. You can get in touch with us for a detailed demo as well as help towards implementing your use case. Thank you.